Welcome to Simone Quilt's design session number six. In today's session, I will be walking through design ideas for Melinda's Rainbow Explosion Sampler Quilt. It's absolutely beautiful. Melinda mainly works on her domestic machine, but does have access to a long arm in order to quilt this, so I will make sure to include straight line quilting designs that are able to be done on both. Melinda has decided to do a one inch grid to the square borders, but just needs some ideas on the blocks themselves. Sampler and medallion quilts are so much fun to quilt. It's one of the rare times, in my opinion, that you can go as crazy as you want on the free motion quilting. If you wanna use 20 different fillers, you can, because there are so many different blocks that all deserve the same amount of creativity that complement that particular design. I do try to select one design to use among all sampler blocks or have a common background fill in order to create a little sense of unity on these. So I'll go ahead and start with what I always start with, which is the observation phase is what I call it. So what we can see here is a lot of different sizes of borders. You have the white borders here, here, and here, along here, and here. And then there is a gray border here and here that's created in the space between the blocks. And then of course you have the rainbow borders. And I'm using a black color because that is actually the only color that pops out against all of the, the rainbow colors that we're seeing. So um, next observation is that there are four blocks of the same type in the center. It kind of creates more of the medallion look versus just a sampler uh, block look for this quilt. And then it looks like we have two of the same on the upper left hand corner here and um, on the bottom here. And then we have two ribbon, they're ribbon blocks, but they're just the way the colors were placed on each block. It makes it actually look like a completely different block, but those are structurally the same. And even though um, there are these repeating blocks, I think that making them all different would actually be more in the spirit of this sampler quilt. So we won't actually be repeating any of the designs or I would not recommend repeating any of the de designs among the repeating blocks that I pointed out here. So another observation is that the fabric itself is a mix of printed and solid fabrics. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, you're quilting any quilt top. Um, the Most of the quilting is going to show in the solid fabric. I also noticed that most of the shapes that are used in these blocks are a form of a triangle or a form of a square slash rectangle. So what I would recommend doing is creating a form of library for your favorite designs for each and then mix and match them in your blocks. So I have a really big mental library of all the fills that I like for triangles. And then I have the same thing for squares and then I just adapt them to rectangles or I adapt them to trapezoid shapes. Um, or you can take a, a strange shape and break it into those familiar shapes like I've talked about before in quilt design sessions number two and three. So um, I think that that would probably be the best route for a sampler quilt like this. I don't think that any secondary designs would help this quilt at all. So I think that if you tried to do a secondary design here, two things could happen. The secondary design would just completely get lost because of all the colors and the blocks and just there's so much going on and it's visually just very striking. Um, but what would be even worse, I think, would be is if you did manage to do a secondary design using like a bright thread color or something, it would actually take away from the sampler look of this this quilt top and, and you don't want that. So I think for a quilt like this, you want the individual blocks to shine on their own. You can tell with the fabric selection and with which blocks were chosen in the placement. It's very important that this is a sampler quilt and you want each block to be its own little creative piece of art. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a new layer in here. 
I've chosen um, to show three types of triangle designs, three types of square designs, and then the, the different border designs that I would choose for this particular quilt that I think would work really well. Of course, it does not and should not be limited to just these three designs. I think for a fun sampler quilt like this, going crazy and coming up with lots of different designs would, would be a really great idea and would be actually a lot of fun. So I'll go ahead and start with this triangle here. That's gonna be my base triangle. My first design can be done with a walking foot um, or rulers on a long arm. And it's something that I like to do a lot, which is a dot to dot design. So what I've done is broken up this triangle in half. So my dots are here and here. So I'm going to follow that as my guide and go from dot to dot and repeat the same on the other side. And of course you would want to measure this out or at least do a good job of eyeballing it. And then if you feel like this space here is too empty, maybe just do one line down to kind of fill it out, but I like the, the empty space there. The next design is a little bit more dense. So first start out with creating two spaces here. So just some straight lines here and then doing a wishbone shape here. And then just do some, I just call them straight line squiggles, which <laughs> doesn't really make sense, but that's what they, they are to me. So that would be a second design that I would choose for the triangle shapes. And then a third design, a little bit more asymmetrical versus having the other two were pretty symmetrical would be doing straight lines like that and then a dense fill and I like the the look of having these this, my straight line squiggles again <laughs> like this but it'd be it's it's a very vertical look as opposed to this diagonal um, piece right here I just think they look really good together so those are so those are three ideas for triangles that can be used in a lot of the blocks. So mix and match, do some more, have fun with it, play around. That's exactly what a sampler quilt's for. So then I'll show the ideas, the three ideas I had for the square shape. So my first idea is to put a feather in this shape, feathers, can actually be pretty malleable to the spaces that they're in. They can really fill, fill the space. So just continue around, reaching out to get into those kind of corners and kind of little, little last one there. When you get to this point, then just either echo back in here. I usually, don't pay too much attention to where that trace back goes because it'll just kind of meld in with the spine. So it looks fine. Just looks really thick here with this pen. <laughs> um, if you wanted to add a little bit, once you got back here, you wanted to add a little bit more interest to the feathers just for density, like to make it a very even density, you can go back and add these here. That's if you change your mind or you could do it while you were creating the feathers. I just kind of changed my mind. So you could do something like that. The next design is breaking up the square a little bit just for fun, creating this thin rectangle and then doing some vertical ribbon candy. And 
and doing the straight line squiggles again on this side and on this side just visually looks very interesting and then the third design is if you wanted to put a little bit more depth in the block create a square here travel back up a little bit kind of echo the sides like this travel echo in here to create a frame travel down here go in at a diagonal go up meet the corner at a diagonal here meet the corner at a diagonal down here same thing all the way across and then fill the centers with a fill so you could do a paisley like that kind of travel back up here and then you could do some swirls they look pretty terrible on <laughs> on screen but you get the idea and then you could travel out and then it would give this like a really what's a pretty simple shape of, of a square a little bit more depth and you could have as much fun with different fills in that as as you'd like so that's the third design for squares and just coming back to the quilt top here to show you what i would do for the white borders or the gray border i would do a wishbone shape because that's really great for thin borders or the ribbon candy shape and I do have um, I do have free motion quilting videos as well for how to do those so I hope that gave you some ideas Melinda on what you can do with your sampler quilt it is absolutely gorgeous you can't go wrong with rainbow it is beautiful and when I look at a top like this, I just get so excited because of thinking about all the fun free motion quilting <laughs> that you can do here. Um, if Since it sounds like you are newer to using a long arm since you don't own one and you have to rent one, it would just be a really good way to practice all the different types of designs that you've been wanting to practice. It would meld pretty well into the quilt top because of all the colors, so don't be afraid to try something that you haven't tried before. Thank you so much for sending me your photo of your cool top. If you would like to see other videos of my design sessions, you can find them on my website, simonequilts.com, or on my YouTube channel. And you can just search for Simone Quilts or Simone Quilts Design Session, and that will come up for you. I also have some free motion quilting videos where you can see some of the designs that I recommended in this video.